Hey everybody, welcome to Barbecue Champs Academy. I am Mike Steele and we are certainly looking forward to being with everybody tonight. We have got a uh, one of our partners with Barbecue Champs Academy on tonight with TAPIQ, Miss Gina Burette. And it's going to be great to have her and her son, Jacob, uh, actually uh, helping us out with a little bit of their product to give us some knowledge. And I am really looking forward to it. Uh, they have got something that's going to be, I think, a game changer for the SCA state competitions. And uh, so we're going to let everybody come on in here. As you're coming in, let us know that you're here. Certainly do want to welcome everybody. I see uh, Miss Carly is here. Good to have you here, Scott. I didn't know if you was going to be able to make it, but I'm telling you what, you're usually one of the first ones that's always on. We appreciate you being here. Rick, good to, good to see you tonight. And uh, once again, it was so great me meeting you and your lovely wife in uh, Fort Worth here uh, last month. I had a lot of a lot of good times over there. Caitlin, likewise with you. I tell you what, girl, you was a hoot to hang out with, and and had a great time meeting you as well. Uh, Mike, we appreciate you being here. Um, if, as always, all of our customers that's with us, it's so great to have you here. And uh, we hope that we can always bring informative information to you. That's one of the things that I really try to do on our uh, live stream shows that we do. We bring on an array of people, not just necessarily cooks, but like tonight, we've got a wonderful manufacturer of an awesome product that can be used for backyard barbecue and steak. And um, I am very, very excited to be able to bring stuff like that to everybody because that's how you, you learn it's educational. That's kind of what Barbecue Champs Academy is all about, educating people. And uh, we, uh, we really look forward to bringing shows like this um, to you every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Central. Also, uh, Papa Joe Grilling Supply in Hutto, Texas. So glad to have you guys with us tonight. And uh, they are our newest partner that we just... Uh, got on board with us and glad to have them with us. They do an amazing job. They carry almost every rub that we use in our class, especially all the steak cookers. I know they're supplying a ton of people the steak products. And if you are looking to get your SCA products for steak competitions, not only steak, but barbecue as well, check out Papa Joe Grilling uh, Supplies in Hutto, Texas. Uh, we do have a link on our website, so if you go to our website and scroll down to the bottom of every single page that we have, you will see their logo, and you can click it, and uh, it'll take you directly to their site, and we would certainly appreciate everybody that would support them. Let's see who else we got in the house. Mr. Nick. Nick, I tell you what, buddy, I'm looking forward to uh, me being with you guys uh, this coming weekend, we got a big competition over in Gilmer, Texas. Risk it for the brisket, a brand new competition, a $10,000 payout. We're excited to go over there. I'm locked and loaded. I'm trying to get me another grand champion. I'm shooting for that seven where I can go to the jack. That's my game plan. So I've got a lot of stiff competition that's going to be over there this weekend. These competitions are never easy. But um, I am ready to go do it. And no matter what, if you win or lose, however you finish, it's about being with family and friends and loved ones. And I've got some amazing barbecue uh, family and friends over there. And it's going to be a great time. John, glad to have you with us. Uh, I tell you what, we've had some pretty nice weather down here this, this last three or four days. It's been absolutely wonderful. And uh, I'm glad that the frozen tundra up there in Wisconsin is not 15 below zero. Let's see. Miss Sunny, hey, how are you doing? Glad to have you back. You know what? I tell you what, I've been, I didn't know if I just completely disappointed you, Sonny, when I was in Fort Worth. Ever since I had seen you, I had, you never showed up, wasn't around, wasn't commenting, never was on my show no more. And I said, man, I must have just rubbed her the wrong way. So... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding, Sonny. I know you was out on a trip, and it is great to have you back. Uh, we appreciate you uh, being on our show tonight. we got some great information coming. If you are cooking in the SCA state competitions or just backyard cookers as well, you do not want to miss this show. we got some great things coming. Uh, also, got Mr. Rick from Illinois. Appreciate you being here. There's big Mr. Jim Huggins. Uh, almost forgot. Yeah, but you didn't, and that's all that counts. And we got some great stuff that we're going to be talking about tonight. Good luck in Pennsylvania. Mr. John, we appreciate you being here from Memphis, Tennessee. 
Let's see who else we got on. I don't scroll down so fast. There's Raz. Raz, good to have you in the house, man. And it was great meeting you as well. There's one of our very own, Mr. Joey Smith. I tell you right now, that guy is all heart, especially with what he has done for the uh, men and women who suffering from PTSD uh, in the military and first responders. His Texas Chrome Heroes Foundation is a huge success helping these men and women. And Joey, I tell you what, brother, I am so proud of you and what you have done and all the people that have gotten behind you. Mr. Bo, appreciate you being in the house, man. You have been doing really well in your competitions. I've been following you. Uh, keep it up. Uh, Mike, yes, Peppa Joe's, they're awesome. So, um, And I think Joey's probably uh, doing a lot of stuff trying to help support you. I know you're right down the street for him. So uh, anyway, we appreciate we appreciate them being back on board with us. Let's see. Larry Mad Dog. I tell you what, sunny California. I absolutely love the place. I got a chance to go out to uh, Torrance, California to visit the Edelbrock headquarters when they had just talked to me about buying my nitrous nozzle. And I had never been out there before, and that was some of the nicest weather that I had ever seen in August. And, I mean, it was like T-shirt, felt great, no humidity. And I was like, man, I could get used to this. Y'all can keep the prices and the gas prices, but the weather was phenomenal. Mr. Terry Rohn's in the house, 2018 SCA World Champion. Glad to have you with us tonight, Terry. Let's see who else. Caitlin. Uh, Papacho Grill and Sajudo is a great store, and we find some super fine folks. Absolutely. I, I don't think I got a chance to meet them uh, when I was at uh, Fort Worth. Let's see. Nick, what you got going? Gilmer's going to be a great one. I am looking forward to it. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Monty, got you in the house. Certainly appreciate you being with us. There's the lady herself. Hey, champ, what's going on? Miss Marissa, Miss Consistent, as I gave her the nickname all year long. She showed up, she showed out, and she schooled the boys on how to cook a steak in Fort Worth last month. And I tell you what, she brought it. She absolutely brought it. And then not only did she did she she show up and show out on Saturday and Sunday, but she also showed up in the parking lot on Friday and she schooled her brother as well. <laughs> he called her out on our show here about three months ago and she said, well, you just tell him to bring it on if he wants some of me. And sure enough, we made it happen. And if you didn't see our Clash of the Titans, brother versus sister, you need to go watch it. It was absolutely awesome to get out in the parking lot and shoot that live right there on the shot. You had a great weekend. And Marissa, we appreciate you being with us. Sonny, it is glad to have you back. Let's see who else we got. Mr. B Extreme in the house. Danny, appreciate you being here. Daniel, thank you for being here. Rusty. Uh, we got quite a few. Brandon, it was great meeting you as well. Uh, we're going to have those ancillary classes up here pretty soon. We got 16 classes. Let's see. No, we got four categories, three in each one. We got 12 uh, ancillary classes that we filmed um, here about a week and a half ago. And I'm just telling you right now, they were absolutely amazing. Thank you, guys and gals. are going to really, really like what we're going to bring for these ancillaries. Uh, Susan, glad to have you here from Liberty Hill, Texas. So, uh, And Mr. Terry, uh, glad to have you with us tonight. I was reading some of your comments about the judging last night on Mr. John Lindsay's show. And if you're not catching John Lindsay's show, the Arkissippi Live show with Mr. John Lindsay and Hottie Toddy himself, Mr. Ronald Burns, make sure you do so on Monday night as they go live at 7.30 with the pre-show at 7.15. Let's see who else we got. Mr. Larry, Larry Dwayne Anderson, real smoke in the house. Yes, your logo looks good. And you and Nick both did an outstanding job with those logos. Looking forward to meeting you or being with you this weekend, uh, Larry. It's going to be a fun time indeed. Mr. Brian, we appreciate you being here. Danny, thank you for being with us. Greg, thank you for being with us. And... Um, Jeremy from Searcy, Arkansas. We got quite a few folks, 48 of y'all, and y'all are still coming in. Uh, tonight, if you have any questions as we bring in Gina and her son here in a minute about some of their products, this is going to be great. As you know, I have been really working with her over the course of the last couple months to try to bring something a little bit different uh, to the SEA steak cookers for consistency on reading steak temperature. I know that's one of the biggest problems that y'all face is the doneness 
And a lot of times we just take the little M4s, MK4s and go in and probe it. And a lot of times you can hit fat pockets and it'll really, really throw your, your doneness off if you not don't realize that you're in a pocket. So trying to come up with something that'll be a more consistent read evenly across that stake. And we're going to kind of explain uh, what's what she's got coming here. Uh, and I think it's going to be a game changer. So um, to help with those consistency in the the doneness scores. And Marissa can certainly tell you about that misconsistent. I tell you what, she seemed to have that figured out. She was always nailing that doneness just about everywhere she went. So um, anyway, anything that we can do to help and innovate, and, and even if I have to work with manufacturers like TapaQ, uh, to be able to, to help the steak and the barbecue people, that's what I want to do. I was an inventor myself. I've got a patent on a product that I developed for racing, and I'm always thinking outside the box. And uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how this works out. We're fixing to bring her in here in just a second. So before we get started on that, uh, I first want to start with this. You know, we have got some amazing partners that have been with us since day one. And I hope everybody that, any, that, that is out there, if you're needing product, that you will support our sponsors in all ways. I know Danny at Big Extreme Barbecue and Mr. Terry Roan would be appreciative of that. Obviously, b, b Charcoal is one of the greatest charcoals that I have ever used. And we've had Ed Riley on here several months ago. We're probably going to get him back on again to talk a little bit more about his, their product. As you know, they've been bought out and uh, by Duraflame. But he said everything's going to still run the same. And things may even be getting better for them as well. So we'll be talking to him about the, the shakeup that went on at b uh, b Charcoal. My good buddy Brian Crawford at Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop also has his own line of rum, the Crawford's uh, Barbecue Products, Pit Products. And uh, he carries almost every rub that we have in uh, our classes, and I certainly do appreciate him. Also, Papa Joe Grilling Supplies in Hutto, Texas. Uh, we got a link on our website. If you go to the bottom of every one of these of our pages, you have all of these uh, companies with their logo. You can click it, and it'll take you straight to the classes, or excuse me, straight to their page. But we appreciate them being on. My good buddy David at Gunner Wilhelm, one of the absolute best knives that I've ever come across. We appreciate them being on board with us. Also, TapaQ, who is on our show tonight, Gina. Uh, she's the founder of the company, and um, we're looking forward to giving her a chance to talk about their product, the barbecue store, Mr. Dustin. Amazing product, fast turnaround. They are always good about getting products out immediately. We appreciate them as well, and our bud buddy Kale at Barbecue News Magazine. Looks like I left the E off there. Anyway, so without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and bring in uh, the lady of the hour. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the TAPIQ. So let's bring Miss uh, Jenna in here. How are you doing, lady? Hey, I'm fine, Mike. Uh, Thanks uh, for the opportunity to share today. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And is this your son? This is Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Jacob, how are you doing? It's great to meet you. Nice and to meet you. Uh, it's glad to have y'all join us tonight. We're, we've got quite a few folks on. And, you know, we certainly do want to talk a little bit about some new innovative product that I know that we have been discussing. I appreciate you even listening to my wild ideas and trying to bring something that we feel like will be a better product uh, to uh, steak cookers. And obviously, if it's good for the steaks, it's going to be good for the barbecue uh, competition uh, people as well. And if it works for both of those, we know like racing, it always comes down mm -hmm. to the the, uh, the everyday people as well. That's how this stuff mm -hmm. works. So um, let's talk, Let's you know, before we just dive right into it, what's a little bit of your background? Tell me, tell me how you got started. You know, there's a lot of, there's got to be a lot of software because I've got some of your product. I should have got this thing untangled. I put it in a pan just a minute ago, but your TAPIQ that you've got, there's got to be some pretty amazing uh, software innovations that go into what this thing will do. Wi-Fi connects to your phone, stores, I guess, in a cloud or, or maybe on your site. I'm not sure about that, but tell us a little bit about you and your background. Hi. Well, you may not know, but the name of our company is actually Innovating Solutions. 
So innovation is a big deal for us. And I really appreciate that about you. Inventions and inventing things that are new and aren't out there has always been a part of our history. So we actually had the very first Wi-Fi barbecue thermometer that was cloud-based that we released back in 2013 when there wasn't even any Wi-Fi um, smokers yet or grills or anything. So we right. were the first to market and we're based in Kansas City. Uh, it was actually a barbecue um, champion that helped us get started. And his name is Chris Marks. He was an eight time uh, world cha champion from the um, World Series of Barbecue here in Kansas City, the American Royal. His father was in barbecue. Um, of course, Kansas City Barbecue Society is here. And so American Royal was a big part of our start. We went back in 2012 and uh, did a prototype and uh, we've got all of our history. Our first little one looked like a, this first one kind of looked like a little router with the same wow. thing. So this okay. was our very first tap before there was anything. And uh, we kept moving forward in our innovation and and uh, up with our latest one, which of course is the tap touch, which is the touch screen. Right. But, uh, we do have a patent on uh, the technology that we have here because we have the um, wired and wireless probe. And as you see, I've got a wireless one here. Just pick it out and it connects right up to the tap Or you could have wired probes in here up to eight. Right. Um, and since this is a cloud-based thermometer, it does go to our website. And uh, actually, you can save your history, take notes, put images in there, um, track the graphing, find out what actually made that brisket the way that it is. We had a lot of restaurants who used it that said that the reason that they used it was to make consistency in their brisket. And we have a lot of uh, competition barbecuers who use this and um, for that same fact, they use it right. for that. Now right. we um, we recently came out with this wireless one, and this was about the time that we we um, started partnering up with you, and it was kind of it's a game changer too because it not only works with the mm. tapic for uh, barbecue, but it also works in pressure cookers, instant pots, um, any type of a, a ninja air fryer. So you can use it on your rotisseries, or you can use it in your steaks, or you can throw it into your pressure cooker. And so having the ability to have a unique type of probe without a battery or use a wired probe. So this probe is, it's a thicker probe. So this isn't really as much for your steak competition, but right. we have our, a lot of our wired probes, which are very, they're a lot thinner than right. the wireless right. and they have the needle points. And so we'll be talking about this whenever you're ready as well. But okay. the background is basically, my background is software. The heart of our system has always been software. It works with mobile apps and the cloud and, um, you know, has the voice commands with Alexa and the Google Assistant and um, your Apple Watch. And so software was the foundation of our product. And that's where my background is, is, is uh, in software. I've been yeah. in software for, you know, almost 40 years. Right, age. right. Long time. Wow. Well, you know what? That was what I was so impressed by was once I got this and, and you talked me through just getting it on my phone. You got an app. You can, It stores everything that I do. And to me, that is really nice. And like you said, you can go in and add notes and things like that. So uh, it's really kind of a, a game changer. And you know, it's not only that, but you've got the tapic you've got the fan assist. So if you want to, you know, go in and set your like a smoker or a backyard grill or something like that, it's a fan assist. So you've got a fan mm -hmm. that hooks up, it plugs into your tapic yeah. and um, oh, that's an extra benefit. <laughs> yeah, fan. yeah, or, yeah. So well, it, it yeah. literally plugs right in. You set your temperature, and you know, I was. I love the fan assist. I mean, on my big rotisserie, I, I have always had a fan assist. I can set that thing at 260 degrees and walk off and my smoker stays at 260 degrees. I don't ever have to worry about it. And yeah. uh, it's just another variable that you get out of the way. 
and it allows you to cook consistent food, mm-hmm. you know, time and time again. So that's the one thing I liked about your Tappacue. You. you can go in, it controls everything. It can control mm-hmm. your fan. It can control probes. You can have a pro, and especially your wireless stuff. You don't even have mm-hmm. to have wires on that stuff. Yeah. Um, and this thing is a little different too in the fact that uh, it also works standalone without the Tappacue. You saw right. how quick it connects to the Tappacue, but if for somebody that just wants to buy something more as like a stocking stuffer or something, this will also just, since it's Bluetooth, right. it'll connect to a mobile device. And then since all of our software is already cloud based, so say you hook it up to uh, your phone, well, you're still within Bluetooth range, but right. if you hook it up to a tablet, it's still going to send that up to the cloud with, with your phone. You can still be anywhere. Right. So you can also use it standalone too, which is right. pretty cool. A, a dual sensor probe that's cloud based that you can use uh, right. for 79 bucks is pretty reasonable. Yeah. And didn't you tell me you don't even have to be, I mean, I can put it in and take off, connect to my phone and then take off and go to the store and monitor everything. Yeah. I'm, you don't even have to be there. And to me, I think you said, yeah, you can be halfway around the world. It doesn't matter. And you can sit there and read and see exactly what is going on there. So, yeah. but I mean, to me, that is, that's the innovative part. And that to me is what helps consistency and not only in barbecue, but in steak as well. And certainly if anybody's got any comments, um, let's see, let us know. Danny Helm, what does he get? Does it pick up high? Does it pick up high? Does it pick up? Tell us what it you mean. There. It gives you an alert if you go too high, too high or too low. Okay. Oh, humidity. Yeah. Well, so you got, you can, these are four pro ports. You can okay. actually have up to eight temperature ports. I mean, you can always leave one out and pick up okay. the outside. Okay. And use that to see how well it is. We don't have a humidity probe with it right now, but. Okay. Um, you can always use leave a temp outside, and we do have this. Um, okay, so this is our dual sensor. This is another thing that's unique about Tappacue. Yep. You have all kinds of probes that work with this. Right. You have single sensors, wireless probes, wired probes, and this wireless or this wired probe here is also a dual sensor. Okay, now that's 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 what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, that... it's, it's a dual sensor, just like the air probe. You're getting two temperature readings in one probe here. Right. So, so that is what we're going to talk about, you know, and I don't want to get too, too far ahead. So, but you know, Danny's question is it pick up humidity and weather condition. You know, I imagine that'll be a pretty simple probe to be able to put in, just have one that'll read air temperature. I mean, Danny, I mean, as far as the air temperature, you could just take a probe and plug it in and leave it sitting outside. And that's mm-hmm. going to read your air temperature, just a single probe. This thing will record up to eight probes at one time. But let's get into the real thing. And I hate I see a few people have left, but man, shame on them for not sticking out to see what this is going to be. Because John's asking, do you have thinner probes? And that is something that we have been working on. Yeah, we, we knew that the ones for like the Tappacue, um, the air probes, these... These are a lot bigger barrel. I'm going to kind of put it up on my camera because you can kind of see it a little bit better. These were too big for steak. I think this is, what, a four or five millimeter, and it was just too big for steak. So that's what we have been trying to get her to, to create something that was going to work. But the dual sensor now is where we feel like we've kind of struck, you know, a game changer. Now, this one is not as big. What is, uh, Jacob, do you know what the diameter of this barrel is? Is it three millimeters? Well, uh, I I actually looked it up yesterday. The the point is two millimeters. Right. So this is two millimeters, but then this looks like it goes on up to four. Okay. So it is bigger than three. So, but okay. we've got a point here that's two. It's two. Okay. Yeah. So what what they're working on now, and this to me is a dual sensor. So the way that this thing is working, it reads the temperature on this tip, and it's got another one that's up here at the very end that would read the pit temperature. So say if I were to put this in my chicken, I could put it in my chicken, it's gonna read the temperature of the meat here, but then it's also gonna read the grill temperature here. So that makes it really, really neat. But the problem was that what I was talking to her is like, how can we get this to work for steak? So the first thing that they're gonna work on is seeing if they can get this barrel a little bit smaller. 
And here's going to be the game changer. You know, the problem is when you go in, and this is the same size here on this end as an as a MK4 Thermopen. So that is the exact same size. It gets a little bit bigger here. It's not outrageously big, and I don't think it would even be too big to put in, a, especially an inch, inch and a quarter stake. Uh, but they are going to work on trying to get this a little smaller. But here's going to be the, the, the thing that we think will really be a game changer for the SCA. It only reads the temperature here. They've got a temp sensor that's up here on this end. The thing that we're going to work with them to do is to put one two inches from this tip. So what would end up happening is, is you insert this in a piece of stake and you go in all the way across the stake. Say your stake's about four inches, four and a half inches in diameter or the, or the width of it. When you poke this in, if you were to stop this, say this is the edge of the stake right here where my finger is, and you stopped it about a half inch from it. Well, it's going to read about a half inch from it. It's going to give you a temperature. And then two inches over, which is going to be getting pretty close to the center, it's going to give you another reading. So you've got this probe stuck in, and you've already got two readings, one about a half inch from the edge, one at two inches, which is going to be pretty close to about the center of a stake if your stake's about four, four and a half inches. You can get a reading on that. Then if you pull this out about one inch, it's going to give you another reading. Now you're going to be between these because understand it's, an, it's going to be two inches from the tip to the sensor. If you pull this out of the stake one inch and back it out, now you're reading in between what those two and at the same time, now you've went over another inch from the center. So you're able to go in now and see completely across that stake without having to poke it, different temperatures. And if you were to, you could put it in, read it. You've got a temperature a half inch from the edge and two inches. You could pull it out. Now you're in one inch from the, about an inch and a half from the edge another maybe inch off center of the stake. And if you pulled it out one more time, this would be back to the center of the stake. I hope everybody's understanding, but now we've done pulled it out twice, about an inch at a time. This goes back to the center, which this one was the first reading. And now you're two inches away. You're on the far outside edge of that stake. So you could put it in on your tap -Q, It's got two readings. It's going to show both temperatures. And as you pull it out, you're going to be able to see what the temperature is completely across that stake. Go in, read it, move it one inch, read it, move it one inch, read it, and it's going to show you uniform across it. Another thing is, instead of poking it down, the biggest thing is, is hitting fat pockets. And if you go in and you poke this down, you don't know if you hit a fat pocket. You don't know, did you get it the same depth all the time? But when you go straight in and you come across, I also think you've got a bigger surface area to read that temperature. So I think you're going to have more contact with the meat, which is going to give you more consistent reading in your doneness. If you really think about this, a lot of this is just some common sense stuff. But the first thing I'm thinking of is I got a bigger surface area to read to give me a more accurate reading. And I think this could be a game changer. And she is working with her manufacturer to see if they can get it at least one size smaller. This is three millimeters, you said, or four. Try to get it maybe down to two millimeters or maybe even as small as this. That's yeah. something that they're going to check. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is this is something that you could put in your stake and go completely across it and pull it out and pull it out, move it an inch at a time, and you would be able to see your range of temperature all the way across that stake. If you didn't think it was perfect, you could push it right back into the same hole. You could check your temperatures again until you get that temperature that you're looking for, and then you pull it out. It's no poking that stake a bunch of times. And there's no doubt it's a protein, so when you pull it out, that hole's going to close up. So this, I think, can be a game changer. Now, Mr. Big Jim Hudgens got a question for you. What is the temp range of this dual probe? Okay, well, so I've already got, got this one in. I don't know if you can see it all. But anyway, this is my uh, this is my dual sensor, and then I also have the air probe is the red one. But anyway, uh, this is it goes from zero to five seventy two is the accuracy, and it is very accurate. By the way, um, we've had these probes for probably three years. Okay. And um, the only difference would be, and I, I just talked to our engineers about it, is just moving the sensor further on down here. And then we could still have two different types of um, probes 
that right. are, are wired dual sensor. We would right. have the one that still keeps the ambient and the one that's going to give you two, two readings two in the meat. Right. So that's very simple to do because we've already got it done. It's just the place of moving it. Right. Um, right. It goes from zero to 572. The okay. cable on this is very, it's double insulated. And you probably it, can't see this, but this is even, then the, this is our dual sensor and it's twice as thick on the yep. cable yep. as our uh, single sensor. That's fine. And the thing is, it's also still braided. So it's yes. not, it's not a rubber or a silicone type that you see on some of the dots. I think the dots is more of the silicone. So this is actually a wrapped braid around it. So right. I think you're yep. going to think that's going to help out as well. What we would probably do in this case is we would probably take off our silicone handle here because right. this is the only thing that's really restrictive temperature wise because it is a high temp silicone, but it only goes up to like uh, four, it's about 470, 480. Okay. And yeah. then, um, but the probe itself, everything is 572 is okay. the max temp on this. And like I said, they're very accurate. We've had them for a long time. Okay. Um, is is it insta read or is there any kind of delay? Well, there's it, at the point for stakes, you won't want to use the cloud because we don't send up temperature readings. It was more for low and slow. Right. But uh, the reading the reading on here does move pretty quick, and okay. this is always a software adjustment where we could even make it quicker than okay. than what it is. But you okay. be using this and not the cloud because our cloud we're sending every like thirty seconds. Right. And we yeah. can change that, make that a little quicker, but this was more for low and slow. Right. But yet, the temperature reading on your display is going to be pretty quick. Right. Well, the thing is, once again, to use it, you would not put it on the cloud. You could, you, know, you don't need to. You want to read it right then. What is the time cycle? Do you think it would read it like in two seconds? Well, I would talk to our engineers about upping it. Okay. So right now, it looks like like it's going up, but it's 92, 93. It just goes up. I don't even know what my temperature is, 93. So right. it's reading every few seconds. Right. But it would, we could change our software to make that. Speed up the software. Better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's not, it's not the probe itself. It's our software that we would just. Have. Right. So just speed up the process on the software where it reads it faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question. What's the accuracy? Well, They've been pretty accurate. We say plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit, but if you put them in, if you put them in uh, your ice water test, you put them in your boiling water test, they're always right on. But we okay. do say plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I want to say uh, Kel Phelps from the National Environmental News said it was the most accurate probe they had ever tested. That was okay. Two years ago. Okay. I tested them. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, the thing is, all you have to do is just get a reading compared to another one. Whatever that reading is, I mean, if you normally want your steak off at 138 degrees, and this thing says 137, and you know it's 138, you just, that's your new norm. So, um, mm -hmm. that to me is the big thing. So, I see a tri-zone in the future. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that I had originally talked about. I mean, she could literally go in and put one here, one here, and another one here where it does read three. But really, that's just a lot of extra, a lot of R&D for her to have to add because the, the biggest problem is with that, Ryan, is you've got to go in and now she's got to completely redo the software. But I'm just saying you can go in and put this into the stake a half inch from the edge, two inches over, that's going to be pretty much well in the center of a four inch stake. You pull this out a one inch and now you're reading in between the one and the two mark because this will be one inch over. And then now this sensor that was at two inches is now at three inches. And that's almost, that's within an inch, inch and a half of the edge. You pull it out another inch and guess what? You've, you've got all three, you've got, you've got four readings across that stake. And, um, that to me is, is what's going to be pretty cool. So, uh, let's see, will this be wireless? Now well, that was one of the things that we was trying to work on at the beginning was wireless, but yeah, we already have our wireless probe. The problem but, that we have with this, and we are going to get this smaller. Yeah. The wireless probe is getting smaller and it is a dual sensor probe with the sensor up here and a sensor here. But reducing the size of this 
is a lot harder than reducing the size of the wire because of the right. electronics that are inside of it. Right. So yeah, you could always use this and we are going to get a small one out someday, but it's still going to be thicker than your wired one. Yeah. That um, was, that was one of the things Ron that I had originally had talked to her about was taking that one that she just showed the big probe the problem is it's got a battery in it and it's just well, no it doesn't have a battery oh it doesn't it oh it was no. the sen it was the sensor right you just couldn't well, get it we have, a, we have a capacitor in this one right so that's what it was but yeah, yeah but, i mean it is electronic definitely right. electronic yeah the biggest the biggest problem was is the capacitor and trying to keep it to where get it can you get it small enough that it's not affected by the heat i think that was what your your problem was wasn't it? right exactly yeah. that's exactly so, what it is. because and, the electronics are this is a bluetooth probe and all the electronics that are insulated by the meat in here you can't get it as hot yeah you're right yeah it's so got a little tiny board inside of it yeah that was that was what we was originally trying to do was to try to get that what, what will the size of the new wireless one be? Do you know how? I think that one's five millimeters, if I recall. It is way yeah. big. I so think this one, this one is uh, six. Six millimeters. Six okay. Millimeters. Um, what, what are you trying? To, what are you trying to get it down to? We're going to get it down to five, which is still going to be bigger than this one, which is right. four. Right. So, um, yeah. Okay. Scott wants to know: Can it be calibrated? Well, we don't have a calibration factor inside our software. Um, we've had, actually, I, I can say this myself, that I believe we have had the best probes in the business because we've had so many years to develop them. And um, it, we don't have an issue, at least so far, we haven't had an issue where they've had to be calibrated because okay. the, the probes are actually humidity proof. All of them are right. there um, and humidity is the biggest problem with probes. And that was one of the first things that we first problems we tried to solve was keeping the water out of the probes. And that's a big thing with this one. This one is the IP um, 67. You can throw this in the dishwasher. You can submerge it in liquid for 30 minutes and it's still going to work. But we don't have a calibration factor in the software. We haven't really needed one, but it's always something we can we make software updates. It's right. not something that it, we we're continuously making updates. So it's something that can be added. If it needed to be. Right. If you, but there's been no issues for you having problems with that. No, okay. I think that the biggest issue, that, the biggest issue with probes has always been water. Right. And that's the thing that we've really tried to solve. The other issue is, um, it is wires, you know, I mean, if you're going to be, crimping these wires a lot, you, you need to be careful with your wires, you right. know, um, right. if it's a wired one, right. you know. Don't, don't but, fold the wire and kink it, and then all of a sudden mess the thing up. And I think most people know that. Just take your wire, stretch it out, keep it nice and smooth, and you don't have any yeah. issues. Yeah. Don't take it and kink it. So, right. but I, to me, Yeah, I, this isn't the best way. This is the way it came. But <laughs> right, right. It's better not to actually have it all rolled up real tight. Keep it loose. We have cable yep. turtles that we sell to help to manage that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the Air Probe too. We have been using on brisket sport boat and did an amazing job. Yeah, I know that Papa Joe's is selling those. I know. Uh, um, I think you had Brian Crawford at Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop mm -hmm. selling them as well. So uh, Terry wants to know: Does it have any warranty? We have a one-year warranty on our everything, our probes and our. Um, Tap the queue, whatever we sell is one year warranty. Okay. Like I said, our, our, we've been so happy because when we first came out, that was our biggest headache was to get a probe that would last. Um, and it was actually so many, so many um, smoker companies at that time were buying our products and they were using them to evaluate their smokers and find their hot and cold spots. So like one of the first ones was say Louisiana grills. They were using Tapacues and they were the ones who told us early on about the humidity issue. And so we, cause they knew it from their probes. Right. And so we started um, working on ways to water seal our probes early, early on. And uh, that was a big deal. We've had so many companies that developed their smokers with our probes. I um, got you. I got yeah, you. I was hand making the probes by myself. 
with uh, some sealant, some silicone sealant, and then heat shrinking some uh, wrap on top of them. So it was like this color coding here, except for I would uh, put sealant here, where it actually was our uh, failure point. This water would come down, it would drip down the uh, line, and then it would get into inside of the uh, probe. Right. Malfunction. So I sealed that up mm -hmm. and then, you know, heat shrinked it. So it became pretty much waterproof. And I was doing, you know, those probes every single day for a while, maybe a year or two, until we were finally able to, you know, make them uh, manufactured this way. Yeah, and, okay. and the whole point I was getting to is that we do have one year warranty on everything, but we don't have very many replacement probes that we have to replace. Okay, that's good. You know, that's know. Just not a big deal to have to uh, replace lots and lots of probes. So. Right. Well, that's really good. That's really yeah. good. Okay. How does it compare to the uh, the Matrix? I've never even heard of the Matrix. So that's a that's a new one. I think it came out last early last year. I know they were. I, I seems like I remember they was running a lot of Kickstarters on Facebook trying to get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. They, is it they, a steak thermometer or what is yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's kind of like your probe. It's kind it's the bigger thermometer. Uh, if I oh, recall. Oh, it's a wireless. Yeah, it's a wireless. Like it's ours? a wireless. Yep, it's big. It's got it's got, it kind of looks like the same there. And I know they were working on trying to get it out. Larry, isn't that right? In when it in it kind of the big air probe. Kind of like this one, if I recall, if it's the one, or maybe I'm not, the, I mean, I, I know they called it the, I thought it was the meter, but it may have been the meter. Well, yeah, I've heard of the meter. The meter's been out for a long time. Yeah. So I've, I've heard of the meter. I've never heard of the meter. Okay. So. Maybe, is that, is it the same product, Larry? Yes. The same yeah. product. So. Oh, okay. okay. So you're talking yeah. about the meter. The meter. So, yeah. Okay. So the thing that is different about ours is theirs does have a battery, I know. Right. Ours doesn't have a battery in it. Okay. Um, so there's, there's, it's a, a, a capacitor. We actually made it at first to go with our Tappa-Q Touch, which is really nice. And the thing that we have the patent on is that you can do wired or wireless. And why is this important? This is important because if you want a thinner probe, you, you choose the right probe for the right tool. Right. If you're going to be doing a, a a rib or something and you need a very fine point and you just want to get into the very part of it, then you'd use a wire probe. If you're going to use an overnight and you don't want to take off, you don't want to um, take a chance of any uh, probe life running out, you would use a wire probe. Right. If you're doing a rotisserie chicken, you would use a wireless. Right. So ours is the fact that it's flexible and they don't have no display. You can only use it with an app. You can't right. use it with a display. Right. Um, and um, those are a couple of the things that I know that are different. And they also or don't. They the don't. Fan. You can use the fan, the blower. They just says they have a blower. Yeah, I was fixing to say they don't have a blower on theirs. That's the other I, thing. I would say safety too. I mean, with no battery, you don't risk the chance of anything liquids exploding in anything. And <laughs> right. You know, I think that was a big deal. Whenever I first heard of meter, I was wondering like, why is they're going to put a battery in there? That didn't make sense to me. So right. I think that was a big advantage of having a battery list air probe is that you do have some safety uh, quality there. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain all the app, what all the app provides, like set temps, alarms, graphs? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It has a high and low temp alert that you can do for either a meat or a, a smoker. So you can have a chamber alert that tells you that you're, and a lot of restaurants use it for that to tell them if their door opened on their smoker or uh, something happens that is causing their uh, smoker temperature to go down. So it'll give you a, a high and low range for your smoker or a high and low for your meat temperature um, alerts. Um, they are all, and I use this, we all have um, the apps are native, so you're going to get push notifications. Um, that are pretty loud and unique. Um, there's graphing. Um, the graphing can go per probe, um, or you can see all of them together in, together in one graph that you can then um, email to yourself. It's a CSV file, and on our website, we actually have the Excel macros built in so that you can email that, save it, graph it, keep your own notes, or you can save it on our server and then uh, write your own notes and images. Um, right. 
you can have custom probe names. You can create your own. So if you do something unique that we don't have in there that you want as a template, you can, you know, make your own probe sure. names. You can have multiple, multiple phones, as many as you want, sign on to your account. So if you've got 10 people that you want to get alerted at night or <laughs> right. wait, 10 different people, you got 10 different phones. There's a right. guest code on it. So you can have someone that can uh, get alerts and monitor. And like we said earlier, there's voice activation with Alexa or uh, Google Assistant, or you can use the Apple Watch, um, or you can use a computer to monitor from a website if you don't want to use the native apps to monitor. Um, it just does. It does a lot of stuff. Yeah. It does. It does everything except cook the food for you. Is what it sounds like yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. So I mean, that's the one thing I really loved about your product when I saw it. I know Mark Lambert's a huge proponent of it as well. I love it. Um, the ease and the beauty of yeah. it. And like I said, we are still working on this one. I mean, we just talked about this yesterday and or day before yesterday, and she's like, "I'm gonna be able to move that probe, and we're gonna be able to get this thing down and maybe put it like what? I still." I still think the two inch mark is going to be ideal. That's going to get you pretty much well centered a stake half inch from the edge. You can pull it one time, then you're an inch and a half from the edge and three inches. You pull it one more time. You're going to be able to see across that entire uh, stake what your temperature is. And if we can get that thing or if we, she can get this thing down to this smaller tip all the way through it, that is going to be a game changer. And like yeah. I said, with it being the cable, the stainless braid on it, uh, more than likely by then you're going to have it maybe up on a, on a easy rack or, you know, a, a, um, the little rack to get it up elevated. Or, I mean, if your steak's, you know, warm when you put it on, you may have it done in four minutes. You can take it, slide it in, put it there, see where it's at, set it back on the grill and let it come on up to the temperature that you're wanting. So to me, that is, the um, uh, that is the, the big that's the big game changer to me is to be able to have one probe that goes through and you're reading across that state instead of sticking it through with little, and you don't know if you're hitting fat pockets and stuff. So, yeah. well, since this is just something that's brand new and we appreciate Mike for his innovation and the things that he's always thinking about. And like I told him, this is something that would be very simple for us to do because we've already got a dual sensor probe. It's just moving the sensor. Um, but it would be nice to have people that would like to beta test for us. And um, we should set up a special email or something for you to to yeah. uh, contact us if you want to we'll do that. To beta test. We'll do that. Once we once we get or once you get the product, we kind of go through it and look at what we've got. You know, I'll try it, see how it does. And then if, if it works and I don't see any issues with it, then, you know, I, I want to at least kind of halfway work work any kinks out that may be there and then okay yeah. let's get it out now let's let a few folks try this and beta test it and yeah. um i think that's going to be the game changer yeah morgan says yeah i'd try it out so so uh, and this it, is a, a thing too like um in, in mike the and those of you who already have a tap -a -queue and your dual sensor probe i mean i'd like to start seeing how is this reacting for you in your stakes even right now before we move the sensor up so right Right. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, I, and I can do that. I'm going to cook some steaks up. I mean, it's, yeah. just, it's so far up. The, the thing is, I'm worried. I don't know if I'm going to have a steak that's going to be that wide. So. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't be able to test the dual sensor part of it, just the single yeah. sensor. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that would be true, though. If we have one. Uh, maybe we can do something that we can create some samples before we wait for our manufacturer to create them. Right, right. Just shorten do. it up, put it at two inches over. That way you can just, when you stick it through there, you're going to measure a half inch from the edge and right pretty much well. I would I would think most of the steak cooks, four inches, five inches is probably going to be the width of that steak. So that two inch mark is going to get it really, really close to the center. And um, I just think that's a good, you know, like I said, you just slide it out. If it's not where you want, you can push it right back in. And, um, you know, the thing is, you don't have to move it. I mean, if you're looking for 135 and, you know, you, you think it's time to come off to carry over to 138, 139, 140, whatever it may be, you can, okay, it's, it's, it's those two spots right there are where I want it. Let me pull it out. Yep, it's there, it's there, it's there. It's in three or four spots across that stake. It's the same. 
man, you know, you've got it. You never had a, you never had to keep poking that stake. So. Hey, we uh, do have a four inch probe, by the way. Somebody yeah. just asked about it. We, we, like I said, we got so many different probes. That's another thing that makes us unique. Right. Um, well, it's a lot thinner than the air probe, of course. And right. Um, I don't think it's the, might be the same width as the dual sensor. It is. Yeah. It's same only it's four inches instead of six yeah jim the probe itself is going to be four inches okay i mean it's going to be long but what we're saying is it's going to have it measures the temperature now here and what it's going to do is going to have another temperature at two inches so when you poke that through the stake if you have a four inch stake this is going to go all the way through almost to one end you're going to be a half inch from the edge. Obviously, you don't want this sticking out. So it'd be about a half inch from it. And this at two inches is going to be right about in the middle of the stake. So you're reading from the edge and in the middle. And like I said, you can pull this out one inch. And now you're going to be reading an inch and a half from the stake and at three inches. Mm -hmm. And then if you pull it out another inch, now you're going to be reading literally across the entire stake. And But yeah, you do have to have it long enough that it goes through, a, you know, through the stake where you can pull it out. So um that's yeah now our four inch probe is a single sensor so right. that's what we have but if that's an interest for the dual sensor like our dual sensor is six inches and yeah. we do have long probes that are single sensors that are four inches this we call our extra care mini that's four inches right and my, my husband likes these he likes these because when he's in a really small smoker it's just not taking up much room exactly. and he's using it for little pieces of meat Right. like you know little different chicken pieces pies. of chicken and stuff so and it, it is different but we do have this single four inch probe right right well the good thing is if you want to try any of their products she's created a coupon bbq champs you can get 10 percent off at checkout it'll expire on april the 15th and uh, anything that they have you can try it and get 10 percent off and I uh, appreciate you doing that for everybody. Uh, you can visit them at tapacube.com. That's their website. And just wanted to kind of get this out to everybody, especially our steak cookers, to let you know that, you know, we are trying to work with this company to give them some ideas because I'm the kind of guy that I'm always looking at, you know, what can we, what's out there and what can we do to make it better, you know, and that's, to me, that's the biggest thing. If everybody, you know, if a lot of people know my background in drag racing, I mean, you're only as fast as the $80,000 engines that somebody can build for you. But if you want to beat them, you have to build your own. And that's what I did. I built my own. I made my own nitrous nozzle. I did things to be different. And I set two world records. And we was one of the dominant cars in the, in the racing, especially nitrous cuff, for years. But the same thing, if we keep following what everybody's got, everybody's got the same and if you can come up with a product that's better that's more innovative then you try to expound on that the best that you can and i think this is a lot better reading across that stake instead of going in i see a lot you know i mean i, I watch these guys that they film our class and i'm sitting there watching them poke it and i'm watching them poke it and i'm watching them poke it you know and it, it's a lot of a lot of times it's not very consistent and you know they say well you don't know if you hit a fat pocket you don't know if you had a fat pocket and all of a sudden, it's got you second guessing. If you hit two fat pockets and you get two lean muscles that you hit, then which one's right and which one's wrong? Now, you know, to me, it's about the accuracy and, and reading across that entire piece of meat when you go in with it. So, will it work? I, I don't know. Um, that's why we test stuff like this. And, um, you know, if, if people see, man, I, I'm getting much more consistent readings across that state, pulling it through instead of poking it, you know, down through it. And here's another thing. You get in a hurry, you know, how far did you stick that stake down in there? Did you hit exactly? I mean, I heard here a competition the other day. They had a three-quarter inch stake. And, man, you're thinking, wow, what if you went too far down through that? And if you went down through too far, I mean, if you didn't poke it down the same every time, you're going to get a different reading every time. And you get in a hurry and you just don't know how perfect did you get it when you put it in there. That'll affect the temperature as well. So anyway, thanks, Sheena, for your willingness to listen to cooks, you know, and, and I, that's to me is, um, yeah, you know, and, and like, and like Danny said, it's not for steaks, it's for barbecue too. I mean, that's the thing. This is just one thing that we're using, but this thing is amazing for chicken, for ribs, for brisket, for pork butts. 
if you want something that you can set your smoker and walk off and forget it and let it control it, you can do it. All you have to do is just yeah. keep, keep some wood in there and use your fan. And to me, that is the big benefit of it. Well, yeah. and Jacob did, this is the thing that I thought was cool too. He used our, you know, our wireless and he was simmering up some type of a, a, a chicken, like in a Thai sauce where this was buried under the sauce. Right. You can't do that with other probes. Right. You know, and just having the waterproofness of this one, you know, using it in the pressure cooker or putting it in, in, in a piece of meat that's submerged in some sauce is really yeah. kind of cool too. Yeah. Well, I know you told me when you first did it and you put it in the uh, the Instapot, you know, they say, oh, put the chicken in there and cook it for, I don't know, 25 minutes. And you would pull it out and check it. And the temperature of the chicken was, you know, 15 yeah, degrees yeah. over what it needed to be. And that's, you know, it's not where it, I mean, that's a dried out chicken. And you said, I stuck this in there. And I mean, it was done about eight minutes earlier, but yeah. it was a perfectly cooked chicken and it was so much better. So yeah. that to me was the huge thing. I was like, you got to send me some of these for the Instapot. So, yeah. and yeah. pressure cooker. So yeah. that's the wonderful thing about these products and what you've, what you've developed. Well, look, we're going to wrap this up. Gina, we appreciate you and, and Jacob, you as well. Y'all think y'all have got an amazing product. You're a great Christian family to deal with. And I think there's a lot of people that's, that's, you know, looking for something different, you know, and, and we're going to keep working with Gina in every way that we can to try to come up with something that's going to be innovative, that will help the state cookers for doneness. And this is maybe one of the things that'll be the new thing on the market to help with that. Um, you got to try that, it. That's what I want to respond and thank John, too, because I do know that we wouldn't be here without everybody else. Yeah, and uh, I, even, I even mentioned god some people call it luck whatever the the case may be sometimes it's just being at the right place at the right time and yep. something happens but the willingness to listen and to grow and and yep. um, move forward and so i appreciate everybody else i really do yeah well i'll tell you we're we're looking at it we're gonna we're gonna keep working with her and and see if she can get something she gets something she'll send it down and i'll i'll try to play around with it and see if it's it's you know cut different cuts and pulling it through it and how consistent it is and then if that works if, if it passes for that then we'll get it out to some folks and let uh let everybody else give it a shot so uh sounds awesome can't wait to see the finished product yep i can't either and this is something she's going to immediately get started on she's already done mm -hmm. reached out to her manufacturer and uh, maybe Jacob can pull some hats out and see if he can maybe tweak a little uh, sensor around and move it around and manipulate one a little bit just to, to be able to read it. If we see it's doing good, then we, you know, you can go ahead and manufacture it. Yeah, so right. anyway, well, we appreciate y'all being on and um, thank you so much uh, for your support and being a partner with us. We've got retail stores that reaching out to us, wanting to know what to bring in and, we keep telling them, look, these are great little products for the backyard cook because it sure does help everybody cook amazing food. you yeah. got to be able to get them temperatures right. So let's see. Question here. How long should I leave my tomahawk steak in the smoker? Well, there's a there's a million questions right there. There's That's a good question mm -hmm. with a million answers. What temperature are you yeah. cooking at? Are you doing a reverse sear? You know, the best thing to do is get a probe and mm -hmm. put a probe in it in a case like that, especially if you're smoking it. And just depends on what temperature you want it. Are you wanting a medium? You want it medium rare? You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. And um, I'd say the longer the better, though. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's the way to go. Yeah, so just you're gonna have to play around, get your temperature going in your smoker, and let it roll, and get you a probe in there and find out what tear. So if you're looking for rare, pull that thing at 123, 125 degrees you'll have you a nice rare steak at that temperature. So anyway, let's see what we've got. We got one other thing. After the show, we have one air probe and two left going fast. Wow, they're already buying them. That is absolutely is awesome. Perfect. So yeah. absolutely awesome. Appreciate yeah. everybody's support. Yeah. I don't think you're mm -hmm. going to go wrong with them. They are absolutely phenomenal. And um, anyway, John, thanks, Mike, yeah. Gene, and Jacob for another great show. We appreciate it, everybody. Um, y'all go out and have a lot of fun this weekend, cook a steak. I'm going to go over in Gilbert and try to cook some barbecue with my friends and see if I can pull off a GC. Gina and Jacob, we appreciate you being on our show. And, um, we always, uh, always want to give you an opportunity to be able to come and talk about your product. So, um, 
guys and gals, we appreciate you being here with Barbecue Champs Academy. We appreciate uh, everybody being with us and uh, catch us on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock Central. Uh, Lord willing, we'll see you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And as we always say, have a lot of fun and smoke.